All right. Hey, Michael, it's good to see you. You too, Emily. Thanks for having me. Yeah, yeah. Thanks so much for joining. And, and uh, I'm really excited about this brand. I know we've actually been chatting for a few minutes before we started recording. And, um, and I do that sometimes. I get a little ahead of myself and we start talking about some really great stuff, like all the the excitement around this particular brand. I'm like, gosh, we got to start recording this. This is good stuff. <laughs> so uh, for for those of people, uh, for those people that are tuning in and are not, don't know you and uh, don't know the brand, let's first tell us a little bit about you so people have some context as to who I'm talking to today. Yeah, thanks, Emily. Uh, my name is Michael Mudd and I've been in franchise development for the last 15 years. Uh, my role is to help what I find brands. That's half the battle is to go find great brands that are well positioned for growth and what that means is they have to have the right team behind it they have to right to have the right capital they have to have the right foundation franchisee has to be proven predictable so we go look for those brands and then i help those brands realize growth objectives and i've been doing that for 15 years i love it and along the way i get to help a lot of people realize their objectives yeah, and before we started recording, we were talking like you have been behind some really big brands. So you've had a really exciting career, and uh, which leads us to the junk luggers. So uh, I know some people are are visual, and I know at the same time, like with everything going virtual, um, I also didn't want to just have this be a death by PowerPoint <laughs> for people that are listening. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? So let's just have a, let's start off with a conversation. And then if you have some visuals for those of us who are more visual, maybe you could share that with us as well. But for starters, just tell us about the junk luggers. And uh, specifically, you know, you had mentioned a couple of criteria that you look for when you're identifying brands to support their development, I'd be curious to hear how the junk loggers criteria meets some of what you seek. Yeah. You know, I love this format too, because I don't talk with candidates with PowerPoints. Um, it's, I have genuine conversation with them. So this is kind of what it feels like to be a candidate within our process. But, but ultimately, let me tell you a little bit about what's going on with the junk loggers and the history and, and kind of what's happening for the future of the brand. So it kind of goes back to 2004 and, and uh, Josh Cohen, he's the founder, he was 22 years old and he, he saw the junk business being done. And he's like, hey, there's gotta be a better way to do this. Everyone's taking stuff and throwing into the landfill. What if there's a way that we can make an eco-friendly junk company? And that was his mission. It was a purpose-driven company. He created it and, and became very successful. So he has 14 trucks that are operating throughout all of Connecticut. He's doing just over $3 million in revenue out of his territory. He started franchising it in 2016 and now has about 30 franchisees. They service 100 territories. They operate coast to coast. Okay, so lots of stuff in New York, Connecticut, Boston, um, Philadelphia, Florida. We're in California now. We just awarded San Diego the entire market of San Diego to a former 1-800-GOT-JUNK franchisee who, or actually he was a corporate guy for 20 years with 1-800-GOT-JUNK, came and acquired all of San Diego. We have a franchisee that one that's in Burbank that services the Pasadena, but pretty much the whole West Coast is available. So what's nice about it is it's got a great foundation. It's got a lot of success, great franchisees. The one thing that candidates will experience is hearing from those franchisees and what are they facing every day. And they're all extremely excited. They're all doing very, very well financially. And it's really helped them and their families to achieve objectives. So what, what happened, so la this goes back, I've been talking to the junk luggers for two years to get to this point. It's no kidding. Yeah. And, wow. and we were working with Josh Cohen because he had to put a lot of systems in place and there were some things happening. So the first big development that happened with the brand is a partnership with Contractor Nation. And Contractor Nation is a dealer network. They have 450 contractors that work in a dealer system where, where Larry, who's the founder of it, he basically provides the marketing and the sales for these contractors. And they're great contractors, but they're, it's hard for them to do marketing and sales and dry revenue when they're working jobs every day. So he said, what would it be like if I did a dealer network? And he did, and he's built this wildly successful multi-building of hundreds of employees business to support these contractors. 
So he got interested with Josh and said, hey, Josh, we should partner up. And he did. So Larry bought a, a dominant minority position in the junk luggers last year, infused a ton of capital into it. So now he, they, they capped the business. Now Josh has gone out and deepened his, his bench strength. So a few hires that were really important, impressive. One, he hired Christy Ferguson. And Christy Ferguson is the chief marketing officer of the company today. And uh, she was the former chief marketing officer for Edible Arrangements. And she, started, she spent 11 years with them. So she started at 20 locations and then ramped that business up to 1,200 retail stores and basically was the driver of the growth of that whole engine. And he went and recruited her. And then Treehouse Marketing Group has 100 employees in it, which is a marketing agency owned by Contractor Nation. So she's building the systems, the strategies, and the national programming. And then she puts the campaigns together with the local franchisees. And then the local franchisees get all their marketing done by Trios Marketing Group, which drives it a ton of interest into the brand. So if you think what we are today isn't an eco-friendly jump company, the reality of the situation is we're a marketing company. We do marketing. And, and what our franchisees do is then service the work that's yeah. being done off marketing with an eco-friendly junk removal company. Now to make it better, so Josh then hired a whole contact center. He has 14 people that work within a contact center that's fully managed to take the, the, the phone that's ringing. You can book a job digitally through a website or you can call a contact center. Seven days a week, all, with, all hours of operation is manned and staffed with professional people that we have at the junk loggers. So the, the phone rings, comes in, we book the job, it sends it out to a tech stack on the truck, and then the franchisees run the work. We also hired, so he brought- Wait, 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 wait. can I interrupt for a second? Okay, yeah. okay. Drinking from the fire hose, this is awesome. Okay, so, so, <laughs> so we've got somebody with a marketing savvy who can cut fruit into beautiful arrangements and make, what, over a thousand locations, okay? Because yeah. I- Edible arrangements. It tasted delicious, but it's like, okay, edible fruit in, yeah. okay. So somebody that can take something, I don't want to say frivolous because that sounds derogatory, but it's not purpose-driven. It's not eco-friendly. Yeah. It's not necessary. So she's got the marketing savvy to blow that kind of thing up. So we take that marketing expertise, we apply it to something purpose-driven, eco-friendly, needs-based, Boom. Okay. So we got that running. Yeah. And then, so if, so let's say I, as a consumer going through COVID quarantine, I'm like what everybody else is doing. I'm cleaning out the house. I'm yeah. cleaning out the garage. Right. Um, and I need somebody to come haul my stuff. So I can either, there's a, like a 1-800 number that I can call yeah. and they're going to book it and they're yeah. going to forward that to the local owner the local right. franchise owner to be okay. Yeah. And then what did you say about booking online as well? Can you I, can, you can just, you can book it through your website. So you can go to, let's say you, a lot of our marketing is digital. So you hyperlink yeah. it to the micro site at the okay. franchisee, and then they can get reviews before and afters. Our net promoter score is 90. So it's an amazing review that we have on the site. They can actually book the job on the website and never call the contact center. So I didn't even see this coming, but we have company coming and we need to do a run to the landfill and Habitat for Humanity. And literally an hour ago, I was talking to my husband. And I was saying, honey, this evening after work, I can help you load this up and then we can drop it off tomorrow at 7 a.m. Believe me, that is not what my husband and I want to be doing before and after work because yeah. we have company coming. Yeah. You are our customer. It, our, we have a lot. So if you look at our customer, it's we do both commercial accounts and we do residential accounts. So commercial would be more like cleaning out apartment units, cleaning out storage units. We have a roll off container. We can do a dumpster service. We can pull our truck up to a construction site, roll off the container, go take our truck, grab another container and service another job while they're fill, like a construction crew can fill it up. We can drop it in your front. Let's say you had a whole house to clean out. 
and you wanted to clean it out, not our crew, we can drop mm -hmm. the container off and do a dumpster service for you. Oh my gosh. So it's, it's kind of, think of it as, as a full junk removal for a, it's a $10 billion industry, it's huge. And then we service it with a, with what I would say is best in class. It, it, they're with the marketing side of it and then the net promoter and how we're handling the customer. And then we're purpose driven where we're keeping things out of the landfill. We, we upscale, we recycle, we go to scrap yards, we donate. So we even have another piece of it, which is the upscaling piece. You can take, as you start scaling up to a larger operation, you're going to get enough junk where people's junk is sometimes other people's treasure. And then we take that and then we sell it off on Craigslist or we sell it into Facebook marketplace and we're driving a whole new revenue stream with the brand. So the bigger franchisees, our biggest franchisees doing 4 million in sales, the average franchisees doing 955,000 in sales. So, and I can go through even what operating expenses look like the corporate unit, Josh's unit is doing yes. 3 million in sales. He's doing another 350,000 in remix marketing or remix market. So he's selling, he's picking up people's junk, charging $3 million. He's driving off that, taking the same junk and selling it for 350,000 more. But in the process of that, he's keeping it out of the landfill. So he's actually yeah. doing it to, to upscale. So reusing things is even better than recycling them. So if we can reuse it or donate it, we always will. So you'll go to donation centers until you get to a scale where you can actually get enough of this stuff for the economics to work. You don't need a warehouse for this. So what's cool about this business is, is you are not a slave to your landlord, right? You, you have trucks, trucks go service to work. You don't need real estate. It's a low investment. The, the investment range I can go through, it's a hundred and you're about 110 to $230,000 to get this thing open, right? It, it's, yeah. it's a smaller investment. It, it, you basically put marketing behind it. Trucks go service to work. It is an essential business. So I would be, I think it's a mistake not to address that. It's the elephant in the room. How do these businesses fare in the height of, of COVID-19 in this pandemic? And the beauty of this thing is it, it is an essential business. We operate outside for the most part. We, all of our franchisees remained open. They all continue to generate revenue. In fact, one of our best months we've had historically was during COVID-19. And you would be like, well, how is that possible? It's because... <laughs> The consumer was pushed into their houses. We were all mm -hmm. social distancing mm -hmm. and we were stuck in our homes, like you said, with yep. our families mm -hmm. and our junk. Mm -hmm. And we were going crazy. And there was only one of those two things you can get rid of. And it just happened to be the junk. So people were yeah. out everything. They were, they were going through stuff because they had all this time stuck in their house. They were going through stuff they hadn't gone through in a long time. And they were accumulating piles of things that had to get, they had to get rid of. So they would, we did a curbside pickup where the, we did a whole national campaign. Trucks came out, picked up the stuff and, and got rid of it for people. So that, oh, wow. that drove really system-wide growth in revenue. It was pretty interesting. Wow. Yeah. Wow. That's cool. Yeah. All right. So for those, for people that are tuning in and they're tired of looking at our mugs and they, they're, some people just absorb information visually. Yeah. Um, do you have any, what can you show us? Can you show us some trucks? Can you show us some numbers? I know people love to look at numbers. What do you got for us? Yeah, let me, I'll pop something up and I'm going to, I'm going to navigate through some of this stuff pretty quickly, just because cool. a lot of it we've already, we've already seen, or we've discussed a little bit. So let yeah. me just get into the meat of it. And um, so welcome to the junk luggers. The, uh, I'll get into basically, obviously we're an eco-friendly junk removal company. That's the differentiation of what we do is to be able to deliver a, a receipt back to the customer. So if we donate something, we'll mm -hmm. provide them a receipt for tax deductible purposes within four days of the pickup. And no other company is doing that. It, we don't just say we're eco-friendly. We actually put our money where our mouth is and our operation is eco-friendly. We've kept 50 million tons of junk out of the landfill since we started in 2004. The way it works, again, it's a marketing company. We do digital campaigns, traditional campaigns. They then call our contact center. We book the job. Franchisee goes out there and services it. We actually will do an estimate, an estimate on site, and we service it immediately. We don't come back. It's all done in one visit. Mm -hmm. I mean, we just donate it, upsell it. We do go to the landfill, but only with things that we can't go to the scrapyard, recycle, or donate. Got it. 
We do service a residential and a commercial customer. We will log anything except for hazardous materials. Okay. Anything other than hazardous materials. Yeah. Seriously? Yeah. Wow. So in, in some of these jobs are they're multi-truck jobs. They're they become very big. The average customer is going to repeat every 11 months. Every time we get four customers, we get one referral. So it, it, it builds upon itself. You, you look at frequency rates within customers. We've been doing it since 2004. The company, we are very well positioned in the space, which is growing. Contractor Nation, as we spoke about that, this is really, really important for what's going on currently. Why does it make sense now? One, your markets are still available. For the most part, San Diego's gone and we have a lot of candidate interest, but the markets are still available. But we're, we're really partnering with a, a seasoned team. There's, 20, there's about 25 to 30 people that work on the payroll roster for the junk luggers. We do service coast to coast. And can I say something? Sure. They look like they're really fun. Yeah. <laughs> like, like that team of people, like, I want to hang out with them. Do they want to go grab yeah. coffee? They look like fun. They are fun. The whole group has got young energy. They're a fun group. They're, there's a culture that you're going to feel with the organization that, that really is that. It, it's a purpose driven companies are fun to work with. If anyone's been a part of a nonprofit or something, they're just a really fun group of people. But, right. and creative. The, the marketing team, I haven't even shown you that. I'll, I'll hit that in a minute. But oh, that wasn't even the marketing team? <laughs> no, that doesn't include Treehouse Marketing. There's 100 people at Treehouse. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. This is, I guess, the, the attributes. This is why people like the junk luggers. So if you're talking from a candidate perspective, we don't require real estate. That Don't be a slave to a landlord. It's brick and mortar is great. has benefits, but not with pandemics. Okay. <laughs> the, yeah, right. Not in a pandemic. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm seeing some really key words here that um, haven't come up yet. And I know we're, we have just a couple of minutes left, but I'm seeing semi absentee. So yeah, tell so, me this about is that. Of, so if you if you look at semi absentee, like what foundation has to be in place for that to work. So that's why we built in all these operational systems with the junk luggers. The reason we do marketing and handle that aspect, we invested a substantial amount of money for marketing. We invested a substantial amount of money for contact center. So basically it sets it up so the franchisee can hire a team to then go out and service the work. But they don't have to be stuck every day trying to get in a truck. We are not looking for truck drivers. We don't want Chuck in a truck. We want folks that can come in and run the business of the junk luggers and grow it out and scale it within a larger territory. That's what we're seeking. Well, right, you said somebody um, on the executive team at 1-800-GOT-JUNK for 20 years, they're not looking at this because they want to start driving a truck. They, that bought what, all of San Diego, you said? Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's, that's a well, big like deal. an 18 truck operation there. So he started with two trucks. He's launching actually next week, he's rolling a truck. So he's brand new, but he's actually now rolling two separate trucks. And, run, and service in the market, and we'll scale from two and grow his territory out over time. Okay. But the beauty, th as you're scaling, it's not like you have to go and make huge investments every time you're growing. It, it costs $15,000 for a truck. So you're, you're basically Seriously? investing, yeah, because you leverage it. It's a financed truck and it's a real asset. So if you think about a lot of times when you do, would do a lot of build outs and stuff, you don't get, there's no asset to leverage. But right. because the truck is the asset, it's, it's an auto loan. It's just like buying a car. It, it's like well, buying a commercial vehicle. It's a, and you just, you write it off as an expense. It's, and you just buy it, it and finance it. So. Yeah, and so unlike, unlike some businesses where you scale by adding additional locations, physical locations, we've got site selection, lease negotiation, build out, that can take nine to 12 months. Yeah. And scaling with this, we're talking an extra 15 K and I'm, sh and, and how quickly can you scale? Like how long does it take to get a truck? Do we know? It takes like weeks, maybe two not, weeks. not, not nine to 12 months to no. scale. <laughs> okay. Yeah. It, and it's, it's I keep not, interrupting. I, but this is, I like that you're interrupting. Cause it's, I'm just, I can rant. I love this brand. So it's hard for me to just get excited, but 
anything you want me to dive into, I'm happy to, but it's got really good attributes. If you're looking at business model attributes, this one is, is very attractive. We would loved it from what I see. Yeah. It's awesome. Yeah. In-house marketing, in-house appointment center, it minimal staff. We basically put three people on a truck. So if you're going to yeah. go into a single territory and then scale it from there, you're going to hire three people. So if you're semi absentee, you got three people and marketing's taken care of, contact centers taken care of. So you, you have very little to manage if you think about it. So it's, it's even easier than a typical retail operation because they have typically more staff than that. Anyway, those are right. some I'm, real I'm resistant so, to, yeah. to uh, economic downturns. It's been increasing every single, every single year since, the, since a long time. Let me, I'm gonna leave you on one slide just because this comes up all the time. Financials, what do we expect out of these things? So the initial investment, again, 105,000 to 230 to get into it. It is an SBA express lending program, by the way. So it's really easy, snap these things together. You basically put about 50,000 into it, you get 100,000 SBA loan, and mm -hmm. then you're off to the races. Average franchisees doing 955,000 we're real transparent in the, the FDD, Emily. So we break everything down. The, if you look at the median expenses of all the franchisees, like what's their expense to drive in their p and it totals mm -hmm. up to 74.1%. So you're looking at about 26% profit margin there off of 955,000 on the average. And again, they vary. So the top franchisees doing 4 million, bottom end is a single truck, single territory. He's doing about 200,000 in revenue. So the average truck, by the way, does 220,000, which we do list that in the, in the FDD as well. So most of our franchisees have more than one truck, more than one territory, because it's an executive model. This isn't a, a somebody that's gonna jump into this thing and drive a truck every day. At least that's not what we're looking for. We're looking for executive franchisees that can come in and run the business. That's awesome. Thank you so much. And I, I just, this so aligns with the personality and values and principles of the Pacific Northwest and everything that, you know, California, a lot of businesses start in California and move north. I'm kind of surprised this didn't blow up in the Pacific Northwest first, but hey. Uh, <laughs> I'm yeah, like, come you, on, this is amazing. You're in Connecticut, what's happening there? Why did this come from California? <laughs> <laughs> right, right, this is, this is so Pacific Northwest. Yeah. Thank you. Michael, thank you so much. I just, I love working with you. I love it when my clients get to work with you. I just, I, I trust you and I, I trust the brands that yeah. you, that you bring on board. So thank you for your time. I know you're really busy. Uh, I'm going to be sharing this recording with, you know, my, my clients and interested parties in the Pacific Northwest. And, uh, and I just thank you so much. Yeah, my pleasure. Thanks for having me, Emily. I'll All right. You, you guys need something. Give me a buzz. You're the best. Thank right. you, sir. Take care. Have a nice day. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye.